Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at Merfolk which got the addition of Meru Regery in the latest anthology expansion. 3 mana for a 2-2 Merfolk soldier giving other Merfolk creatures we control plus 1 plus 1 so it gives us yet another lord in the deck and whenever we cast a Merfolk spell we can tap or untap target permanence so we can use it to untap our own lands to maybe help us empty our hand faster or we can use it to tap down blockers so we can keep attacking so very powerful addition for the deck and then looking at the rest of the deck it's very streamlined now as we've got a ton of four offs the only flex slots are do we play 23rd land do we play these uh, cheap interactive spells like spell pierce and unsummon and in what numbers do we play them i decided to play three copies of spell pierce as a one mana instant to counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays two great way to potentially counter sweeper effects which of course is the main weakness of a tribal deck like this one and uh, gives us some additional interaction on the stack. And then I have two copies of Unsummon to give me some cheap creature interaction that can also be used to save my own creature from removal. So even against control decks, it's not a dead card. And then quickly going over the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got a full playset of Benthic Biomancer as a one mana, one one, a Merfolk, can adapt to one for two mana, placing a plus one plus one counter on it if it didn't already have a plus one plus one counter. And whenever one or more counters are placed on the Biomancer, we get to draw a card and then discard a card so it can help plus a loot away lands in the late game. Then we've got the full playset of Kumena Speaker as a 1 mana 1 1 that gets plus 1 plus 1 as long as we control another Merfolk or an island, so we'll often be a 1 mana 2 2. Then at 2 mana we've got our Silver Gill Adept, which is a staple of any Merfolk deck as a 2 1 creature that draws a card when it enters the battlefield. The catch is that we need to reveal a Merfolk from our hand, otherwise we need to pay 3 additional mana, but revealing Merfolk in this deck is not a problem. Then we've got Merfolk Trickster, which gives us some more interaction as it can tap down an opposing creature when it enters the battlefield and it also loses all abilities, so it can potentially help us ambush a flying creature or move some key abilities like First Strike so we can make sure the trade goes in our favor. Then we've got Deep Root Elite as a 2 mana 1 1, that whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield under our control, we can place a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target Merfolk we control, which is also a great combo with the Banthic Biomancer, as that can help us place counters on it so we can keep looting and discarding lands and finding more action. And of course, will also help us pump the team. And then Merfolk Mistbinder is the typical Lord 2 mana for a 2 2, giving other Merfolk we control plus 1 plus 1. Then at 3 mana we've got our Meru Reachery. And then last but certainly not least, we have the full playset of Kumena, Tarrant of Araska, despite it being legendary, as it's such a powerful card if it stays in play. 3 mana for a 2-4 Merfolk Shaman, we can tap another untapped Merfolk we control to make Kumena unblockable until end of turn. We can tap 3 untapped Merfolk we control to draw a card, and that can even include Kumena itself. And it doesn't matter if it's still summoning sick, we can tap any Merfolk, despite them being summoning sick, to draw a card. So the play pattern will often be to play Kumena, and then tap 3 Merfolk right away to start drawing cards and then we can tap five untapped merfolk we control once we're done drawing enough cards and we actually want to end the game to put a plus one plus one counter on each merfolk we control so that's a great way to go over the top if we're playing against another creature deck against control decks we will often just keep drawing cards as much as possible and then we're playing 23 lands total can always loot away extra lands with the banthic biomancer we've got seven islands four forests for breeding pool for Hinterland Harbor and for Unclaimed Territory naming Merfolk. So we have a total of 12 untapped green sources to help us with the turn 1 Kumena speaker. And then we have 19 blue sources total to help us with the Merfolk Trickster, which we won't often play on turn 2 anyway. So the mana base is pretty smooth and that's also one of the advantages of being able to play a tribal deck that can take advantage of the Unclaimed Territory. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. Uh, reasonable hands. Although for up against the uh, mono red deck, that's usually not a great matchup. Probably don't need to spell Pierce turn one. That right, could be Gruel instead. As we see Galia. Regery could be great. So this turn 
I probably still want to go Miss Binder into Speaker and then try and put a counter on the Miss Binder so they can kill it with uh, Stomp from Bone Crusher. Lava Coil takes care of the Elites. And a Lunar Elves. Alright. I guess it's probably worth it to keep up Spell Pierce. Just play Kumena, start drawing cards. Questing Beasts. It's pretty good here. So this turn I could go Elite into Mistbinder and then put counters on all my Merfolk. And hopefully they'll be big enough to deal with this questing beasts. Because, yeah, it's going to be difficult to count for Embercleave. Probably put a count from the speaker. If they do have an Amber Cleave here, we're in a bit of trouble since first rank plus death touch means we won't be able to trade off for the beasts. But otherwise, I don't mind trading my speaker for it. Could have also been reasonable to put the extra counter on the other Mistbinder to play around another Lava Coil. Thanks with all. So, yeah, this definitely looks like an Amber Cleave to me. So do I even bother blocking the beast at this point? So that's going to deal 10 to me. If they have cleave plus stomp. Do also want to make sure I have lethal on the way back. So let's say for a second they do have cleave plus stomp, then I guess... I would go to one, and on the way back, I would probably still have lethal. Alright, I guess this is reasonable. So there's a cleave. So I soak up one damage here, essentially. And I'm not that too, too damaged from Stomp. Alright, we're at one. And this should do it. The Kumena speaker of the top wasn't even necessary. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Opponent's got uh, Kiora sleeve. It's also a pretty good one if you're playing Merfolk. Gonna be a watery grave tapped. So, given the chance, I'll probably play Kumena and just draw cards. 
Although we might get Thought Erasured here. Alright, well, if our opponent has a Ritual of Soot, we probably lose this game, unless we draw Spell Pierce on time. And I'll probably place a counter on Kumena's Speaker, so if they have a Cryvda Carnarium on 3, I guess I could also put it on the Rejury itself, which is maybe safer. But it is the most valuable card we have in play, so I should maybe diversify and put it on the Kumena speaker so that if they do still have a cry, I don't lose it. And we also get in for one more damage this turn. And there's Bedevil. Ooh, there's a Spell Pierce. That could be big. Now I'll probably put it on the Deep Roots. Play this tapped and hope they just go for the Ritual of Soot and die. Alright, I guess we can counter that too. And they're still dead on board. Alright, sweet. Didn't even really need a Spell Pierce, but if they did have a Ritual, then that would have been pretty clutch. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and... Uh, yeah, I guess this is okay. The Adapt on Biomancer does synergize quite well with the Spell Pierce. Probably still play a Territory first, though. Since we can leave up mana and then either spell pierce or adapt if needed. It's gonna be a gutter bones. Alright. Guess I'll get in for one. For opponent plays like a uh, witch's oven, maybe I wanna spell pierce it. Take two. Grim initiates. And then ditch the forests. Trickster could be useful too. So do I want to play the Rejury? Could be okay. Alternatively, I could ambush the Initiate with a Trickster and still have Spell Pierce up, or play the Biomancer if we don't expect to need the Spell Pierce. Although if the Rejury survives, then next turn I get to kind of go off by playing Merfolk and untapping lands. So I think I will still play it here. Sadly, Murder Strider gets rid of the Reachery. Our opponent might also suspect that we have a Trickster in hand, because we passed with uh, two mana up, instead of just adapting main phase with the Biomancer. Mistbinder's not bad. I think I'll still keep up Spell Pierce here, in case they have another Murder Strider. One on passes. Yeah, let's just play Biomancer. And then I can probably still afford to play land 4 and maybe discard one spell pierce with the ability. Don't really want to trade. And then I could maybe end of turn Trickster too. Oh, it's a great spell pierce targets. 
Death Baron, I see. So it's kind of a skeleton zombie tribal deck. All right. Can also use the trickster targeting Death Baron, so all their creatures lose the plus one plus one and death touch clause. Right, so I'll send the Biomancers. This works out pretty well for me. And our opponent concedes to that. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a lot of interaction here with uh, Spell Pierce and the Unsummon. But uh, still a decent curve, so yeah, I'll try it. Facing Grixis, they can't Thought Erasure me here with this man at least. It's gonna be Rampage, fair enough. Now do I tap out? Do we keep up Spell Pierce? I think this turn I'm still gonna tap out. Although I guess I could just go end of turn Trickster, since playing Mistbinder on an empty board doesn't do a whole lot for me. And then I can Spell Pierce if needed. Trickster end of turn, and then next turn go Mistbinder into one mana spell. Thief of Sanity is tempting to try and save the Trickster to ambush it, but I can also bounce it for a turn, which is maybe enough time. And I do want to start pressuring them. I think I'll wait on the unsummon on the off chance we need to spell pierce. And yeah, the Elspeth Nightmare, I think we want to spell pierce. Thief hitting us is not great, but we might be able to outrace it. And a lot of the Merfolk Synergy cards are not going to be great on the opponent's side. Another Trickster is pretty good. So let's hit for 5 and then... I'm going to attempt to ambush the Thief of Sanity. And if that fails I still have on Summon up. So that would remove Flying from the Thief. And because Swift End doesn't have a target, it fizzles, and therefore they don't get the creature half of the adventure. And then it's just going to be a trade Trickster for Thief, but that's okay by me. And our opponent concedes. Alright, well, both our Unsummon and Spell Pierce came in handy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Fine opening hands. Facing Temple of Plenty. Opponent on a banned deck. This is probably a gross spiral if I had to guess. Don't think I'm gonna spell pierce that, so let's just tap out for the Merrigery here. Sacred Foundry into Wilderness Reclamation. Alright. That's a scary card. 
would not have minded uh, spell piercing that one. So I can essentially empty my hand here and hope to apply as much pressure as possible, hope that the spell pierce counters one key uh, sweeper and we kill them next turn. Don't hate that idea. And then I could also tap down a land now so they can sell or package me, which I guess is worthwhile. So yeah, let's do it. Opponent with the chemisters, sure. Nope, did not mean to untap the sacred foundry there, probably doesn't matter. I guess I'll tap it down again. Alright, and Spell Pierce we trust. Steam Vents untapped. Kenrith. Well, can't counter that one. So they can use it to gain 5 up to 9, but I can tap it down if I play a 5 mana Silver Gill. And that should still be lethal, but then if they have Cellular Wreckage, I'm gonna be sad. I guess Silver Gill can untap my lands. Do I still have enough? So I could put a counter with a deep root somewhere. Let's say I put it on Kumena Speaker, attack with everyone, they go up to 9. Block, take 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I can play around Settle. Sure. It's possible that the counter doesn't even matter here, but might as well. All right, let's send in everyone. All right, and our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a decent opening hand. If we had the option, we definitely would have uh, started with Kumena Speaker, but no untapped green on turn one. Next turn, probably play Silvergill. And hope to draw land next turn, so we can play Kumena or play Speaker plus 2-drop. Opponent on Ghost Corridor, so maybe a Field of the Dead type deck. Yeah, I think I like Kumena, start drawing cards. I don't know if we should expect a sweeper next turn, seems unlikely, with double green source. So this could be turn for Silver Gill plus Mistbinder and start attacking. Or I can place counters everywhere. I guess the counters aren't bad. Could keep up uh, Trickster as well, and then play the Mistbinder next turn. 
if I'm not gonna tank this turn anyway. Questing beast, sure. So that works out beautifully. And then they might just be dead here. Play Mistbinder. So that's 12 plus another 7. Yeah, that's exactly lethal. Alright. Well, turn 5 kill on the play. Kumena's a powerful card. So yeah, Historic Merfolk's a very powerful deck nowadays. Definitely has the highest density of lords that pump the entire team. So it's definitely the premier tribal deck at the moment. The worst matchups probably being Monorant that can burn all your individual Merfolk so your synergies don't get to shine through. And then control decks that can potentially wipe the board. And if you don't have a timely spell pierce, you tend to lose those games as well. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.